Tammy's joining us via Twitter right now. I'm very excited about this. She's a female bodybuilder. She's also a fat loss expert and product educator for Precision Sports Supplements, 24-hour fat burning formula. You can go to 6-pack.ca. That stands for Canada, by the way, in case you don't know that. Is she Canada calling in from Canada today? She's Skyping in. We got her right now. And she's also got a posing and fitness DVD uh, where she models and has bikinis, uh, bikini fitness and competitors. It's available at ultimatecontestprep.com. Ultimatecontestprep.com. She's got a lot more going on. She's got a lot going on. She's got a lot going on. Very beautiful. Tammy Strom is joining us from Canada via Skype. Tammy, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Uh, doing very good. Thanks for joining us this morning. How I'm uh, here. I'm sorry, say it again? I'm excited to be here. Well, we're excited to have you. How is the weather? It's springtime here, but you're in Canada. How's the weather there? Actually, the, the snow's melted now, and it's, it's getting a lot warmer. So I finally started getting some flowers coming up in the front yard. So that's a good sign, <laughs> always. Are you born and raised in Canada? Anymore, so. Are you born and raised in Canada? I am, yep. Actually, originally from Ottawa area. What part of Canada are you in right now? I'm in the Toronto area now. I actually live in Burlington. I got to get up there to tea town. You do. Now, yeah. Tammy has just announced to the world that she's pregnant, so there will be no competitions for her this year, which is a little disappointing. But, Tammy, tell us a little bit about your career and, and how you've done. Well, I, um, I've been competing probably on the whole now for almost 11 years, and um, I turned pro in 2005 by winning the overall Canadian championships. It's, uh, that's the top national competition in Canada where they award one pro card per year, so it's pretty darn competitive up here for the Canadian ladies. Um, that was the top off an amateur career where I placed pretty much first and second in all my shows, which I was really pleased. Um, was competing in figure, um, and uh, then I went on to the pro ranks, which is it's a little bit more challenging for sure, definitely competitive, but my pro debut was uh, late 2005 in Toronto Pro. I placed top 10 in my first pro, and uh, I've done several shows since then, mostly for branding and marketing and um, getting my name out. Um, it is very tough out there. There's a lot of politics involved in the industry, so it's really kind of about getting your name out there and doing as many shows as you can. I, I have kind of a specific strategy in place for what I'm doing so and why I'm doing the shows that I do. So, Well, what is that strategy? Um, it's For me, it's really some athletes compete really just to compete, and they do six, seven, eight, nine shows a year. My strategy really is more about creating the brand, Tammy Strom, getting my name out there as an expert, as a writer, as a speaker. And by being present on stage, I'm putting myself out there to the masses. But it is very physically demanding, and it, it's very depleting on your creative and your intellectual reserves as well when you're in active diet and training state. So I only do a couple shows a year for that specific strategy because my focus is on you know, my business projects, building those things, and then, of course, my family as well. And, you know, you can't do it all, so I try to keep that balance as much as possible. But I like to look really good out there. It's about looking my best on stage. Um, figure criteria has changed over the years, and I do tend to carry a little bit more muscle than what they are considering ideal right now. But that's the look I like. So it's about presenting my best package on stage. So, so, so we know you've been uh, a professional bodybuilder since 2005, you said? In totality, Correct. how long have you been doing bodybuilding? How many years? Well, to be honest with you, I started competing in 2000, but I actually, I'm 33 years old now. I just gave away that number. Um, but I actually started into this whole lifestyle when I was 15. I got bit by the bug, and I just fell in love with the bodybuilding magazines, everything to do with diet and training. It actually led me to study kinesiology and nutrition at university, and it was just a bug that I had continually right through, and I just continued to train hard, and then finally when I finished university was when I decided to take to the competitive stage and really see what I could do with this. I actually started out first competing in fitness, which has a gymnastics dance routine as well as the physique component, and then due to um, some back injuries and whatnot, I moved over to figure in 2003, which was more of a similar physique without the gymnastics routine, which is very strenuous, as you can imagine. 
Now, you talked a little bit about dieting and the sacrifices you make. A lot of people think that you just go into the gym and work out about 100 hours a day, or 100 hours a week, rather. What do you actually do to maintain your body is outside of the gym? Well, a lot of people, like you said, do think that, and it really is that train smarter, not harder. You, you are, of course, training hard, but really, nutrition is 80% of it. You are what you eat. So following a proper meal plan with the small frequent meals, enough calories to build lean muscle, enough protein, healthy fats, and the proper carbs in the right increments are critical to a bodybuilding foundation along with water and proper nutritional supplementation. But the training component itself, it's not always more is better. You know, on average, I train with weights about five days a week, which most top pros will hit the gym about that much for the weights because you need to allow the muscle groups to recover in between. Otherwise, your body will just continually tear down muscle tissue. Cardio will vary. I mean, for me, um, getting close to a show, I do now have to do um, some double sessions of cardio, meaning two sessions of cardio five or six days a week as I get close to a show. Off-season, it's more just like a single session four or five times a week just to kind of keep lean and trim, but not contest condition at that point. So it definitely does amp up as I get close to show. I think we have some pictures of you that we can uh, show. And my biggest question is, do you ever worry about um, overdoing it? In, in the sense of like the, the overtraining, you mean, or going too far with the, the yeah. physique? Yeah, dieting, you training, you know, just, just overdoing it, pushing your body too far. It's, it's a very, very real thing. And, and that's probably, you do actually see that a lot in the sport. And just like any hard training sport where you're pushing your body to the limits, there's a lot of injuries, there's burnout, mental and physical that can come up. Um, so myself, with the one benefit I have is my educational experience. I'm very aware of my body. I'm very respectful, respectful of its boundaries. I push myself, but you know, there's a natural wear and tear that has certainly occurred over time. But I always try to kind of keep my brain in check and say, you know, be smart about it. You push your body to a certain point, but you also have to be reasonable. Because if I push myself to the point where I tear something or I get critically injured, I'm not going to be able to do this anymore at all. And, and this is a lifestyle for me too. So it, it definitely sounds like it's a delicate balance and that. And that's kind of why you moved away from the fitness and the gymnastics so much. Exactly. Exactly. It was just too much wear and tear. I'm, you know, I'm not, you know, five foot two, so I'm five, six and, and just longer limbs and the wear and tear on the joints. Absolutely. My back, my hips, my knees were taking a real beating in that category. So so, so tell me about this Tammy Strong brand. What are you trying to build here? What are some of the things you have going on? Well, basically the biggest thing that um, I've been working on is myself as a body transformation expert. I've worked with many individuals, both contests, as well as individuals who just want to lose weight, get in fantastic shape. I want to get my name out there to the masses. Um, in terms of my knowledge, expertise, what I can do for them in terms of helping them change their lives. Um, it's also about, you know, it's not just giving people nutrition plans, training plans. It's about also life strategies, helping them make behavior changes. I'm really into that component of it as well, so a whole kind of integrative component. But my plans with that really is, you know, I want to get more involved in TV work. Um, I'm doing speaking engagements. I'm, I'm writing as well, so for several magazines. Um, so it's just getting myself out there more. So it just creates more opportunity to reach more people, and I can do more with that down the road. You know what? Me and Mike are actually looking for a, a trainer right now to help us get and, back in, well, here's in, the, in, in tip top shape. Here's the thing. I see, Tammy, that you do this online as well. You'll do online coaching and meal plans and training and supplement plans and goal setting. So, I mean, yeah, we are looking to get back in shape. Uh, Daryl's a professional football player and uh, I'm not. Um, and <laughs> and for me, I, I, I've just done the uh, cut my portion control, cut my portions in half and portion control. I'm about 5'6", Daryl's about 6'4", um, and uh, we're different weights. But forget, the, forget all that but, talk, Tammy. We need a personal trainer. Is it possible you can train us all the way from Canada? Uh, you'd be amazed, actually. I've worked with quite a few people in the U.S. and Europe, actually just completely online. 
Um, basically, the communication is via phone, via email, and well, now, of course, we have the wonder of Skype, which I think I might be breaking into here, so this could be a whole other avenue for me. Um, but definitely, I basically provide, I get all the information via internet, via pictures, via phone, and I've worked with so many bodies over the years, I just make it very specific to what the individual's goals are. So definitely, it's absolutely possible. I can work with anybody anywhere in the world as long as they're willing to communicate back and forth. So how would a situation like that work? I think so many people are accustomed to hiring a trainer, going to the gym, lifting, lifting some weights, uh, being pushed to lift more weights, um, and then being told to eat better and, and trying to follow that. How does it work over the Internet? Well, you still have the aspect of the individuals that I work with do need to be highly motivated. I can provide support and guidance on my end, but because I'm not physically there providing the one-on-one -on -one training, these individuals do have to be motivated to get out to the gym or to work out in their home, whatever their goals are. So I do like to work with individuals who are really in a state of readiness to make the goal changes. And I'm basically there. I'm available for them via text, via email, um, scheduled phone calls. So if they need to check in, if they need a dose, a head check, if you will, or if they need a, a dose of motivation, I'm there to provide that. But when it comes to the training, they do have to get themselves in the gym themselves. These types of online coaching things are becoming more and more common. And uh, myself, I found I, I was working with a lot of individuals in person, but I just find I can reach more people and help them achieve their goals online. And it's just very rewarding. And I can still pursue a lot of the other parts of my, my goals I want to achieve. So to, to me, it seems that it would be tough because that, that seems like it's the problem that people aren't as motivated to get to the gym, that people aren't as motivated to work out. So how, what kind of things have you been doing to kind of help on that end, you know, to get a person motivated to work out? Yeah, like my focus is really set on working with the motivated. So the people, so I work with a lot of athletes, I work with a lot of competitors, I work with a lot of people who are just downright fed up with not being able to change their bodies and they're really at a peak state of motivation. And then it's helping them also work with, you know, positive thinking, setting their goals, um, visualization exercises, strategies that they can incorporate into their everyday life that's relevant to other aspects of their life as well that can interplay to help them get their butts into the gym. Um, it's definitely going to be best for those people that you can't yank off the couch even if you tried. Those people need to have someone in like a personal trainer right in the room with them. There's no doubt about that. That's going to be their best chance of success. My, mine is more for the more action-oriented, motivated people who really, you know, they just maybe have a tight schedule, they need to kind of have that flexibility. Tammy, did you always know when you were a kid that you wanted to be, I know you said when you were 15 you started getting into the lifestyle, but did you always know when you were a kid that you were into this? Were you always intrigued by the gym? I was always intrigued, always physically active. I was an athlete throughout my childhood doing track and field, basketball, baseball, you name it, I was pretty much doing it. Um, in terms of my fascination actually was always with the human body. Um, my mom was a nurse, so I was like the six-year-old that was reading her nursing books. So I was always really fascinated by that. So there's definitely not always an interest there. And it just kind of, you know, molded in that direction as I got older and combined with athletics and just combined with the real passion for nutrition and exercise science and just the lifestyle as a whole. Was, is there really ever a line of being unhealthy, being too fit? Um, and being unhealthy. You see guys like Mr. Olympia or, or all these other guys and uh, Victor Martinez and all these guys. Uh, is there ever a case where you feel that somebody is too fit or, or too big? Absolutely. You, you asked a really great question there. This is actually a topic that I'm actually quite passionate about. Um, having been on the far ends of the industry and also being someone who tries to maintain a balance aspect in my lifestyle, you do see in this sport extreme cases in both individuals pushing to extreme um, body, you know, body muscle levels, which can involve, you know, extreme measures, unhealthy measures um, that definitely can be hard on the body, age the body more rapidly, could lead to the risk of diseases. Um, that's when they take it to the unhealthy extreme. There's a whole other end of scope as well when they take it too far. 
um, of the risks of developing, you know, body dysmorphia type issues, which are issues where they're trying to stay excessively lean. You know, they see themselves as heavier than they are, almost like eating disorder type behavior. So there is a whole realm there. And one of my missions, especially when I work with competitors, and I do work with a lot of competitors, is helping them understand the red flags to look for, that they may be somebody at risk for developing one, an eating disorder type body builder type, because they are out there, um, you know, and where they're taking it, where it's no longer a healthy lifestyle and they're just pushing it too far. Talk about ultimatecontestprep.com. I know that so many people like watching you perform and, and it's really interesting if you look at YouTube and, and some of the other online video destinations, there are so many sites where uh, the, the female fitness and female bodybuilder videos just fly. I mean, they'll do hundreds of thousands, if not millions of views. And I'm not sure why that is exactly. I mean, it's nice to see you guys compete, but there are so many videos out there. It, it, it's interesting to see, you know, it do so well, so quickly. Um, do you have an idea of why that happens? And also talk about ultimatecontestprep.com. Absolutely. I, I think, well, there's definitely a fascination. I mean, the bodybuilding world is one of those um, sports that doesn't get the credit that it deserves in terms of how hard it really is to do and how challenging it is to push your body to that kind of level. And that being said, um, a lot of people are fascinated with people who are in phenomenal shape. They, they, they love to know how people did it, how they got there. They love watching the videos. They love listening to people go through the stories. It's inspiring and motivating. And I think, you know, I've, I've seen this firsthand with other people that they do find those videos and resources just can actually kickstart them, them into action, even if they don't aspire to be a competitor themselves or to be a bodybuilder, if you will. They might just want to, you know, tone up a little, lose some fat. Um, it can be really motivating. Um, UltimateContestPrep.com is actually the website for my posing and stage presentation DVD. So that we sell that internationally. It's a great tool and resource for competitors who are looking for one, a source of visual motivation because the video is very detailed with competitors and myself providing instruction, um, which is very motivating. But then it's also for skill development so that they can practice that posing and stage presentation in the comfort of their own home or alongside a coach. In building this Tammy Strom brand, what are some of the other areas that you're looking to get into? I would love to um, definitely, I, I have plans for a book to have out hopefully in the next two years. It's, I'm plugging away at it right now. So it's, uh, it's a work in progress. I also would love to get into fitness clothes, uh, fitness wear. I love that. I have some ideas. I've actually had some um, clothing designer that I had do some initial drawings of my ideas, and I have those ideas. It's just being ready to put them into action. And uh, just really having more presence on TV as an expert um, and being more involved that way, writing for magazines, maybe being a more um, writer on a bigger scale for other publications as well. I think that you certainly are very busy, and, and we'd love to have you on more. And we're, we're glad to have a few minutes with you here. I think the one thing to talk about is that, you know, for so long, I think female bodybuilders and fitness competitors were viewed as, as women who look more manly and more masculine. And now uh, women like you who are really beautiful are, are getting involved in the sport and, and actually changing the way people feel about it in general. And, and that, in my opinion, is why there are more views online and, and the, creation, the curiosity, rather, uh, spurs more people to look for these videos and look for more beautiful women doing this kind of thing. Would you say that, that you, you feel that that's the case? Um, absolutely. I, it's definitely over the years become a lot more mainstream in the sense that there are new categories such as the figure category and now the latest edition, the bikini category, which have women of varying levels of muscularity um, and body fat levels, whereas the traditional, you know, old school women's bodybuilding is very hard, very lean, and there are a lot of connotations with masculinity in, in that division. Um, when fitness figure and bikini evolved, it just opened up a whole realm for women who want to be fit, but maybe they don't want to be as muscular as a bodybuilder, you know, then they could go for bikini, or if they love the muscular look and want to be super lean, they could go for figure, but that means they don't want to be as big as a, a true, like, female bodybuilder. It's a more feminine component, so there's definitely been a lot more divisions opened up 
to allow those women to to compete and it's inspiring for women and then of course you know more men are interested in that as well because they like to check out the fit ladies so mm -hmm. And obviously you do some modeling and you look very good when you do the modeling and, and I think that when you and, and your uh, colleagues and, and fellow competitors do it, it obviously spurs more interest as well. Now, I think that people don't realize there's so much more that goes into the competition than just looking fit. There's, and I think you touched on it before, but it's how you walk and, and how you uh, present yourself on the stage. It's tanning, how your tan looks, even if it's the fake tan, the painted on. Tan, and you can talk a little bit to that. It's also your outfit. You're, you talked about coming out with a fitness clothing line, but it's also, you know, you guys have your outfits custom made, and how does your outfit look, and how does it hug your body, and maybe even as small as it is, what imperfections does it hide? And then also what the judges are looking for. They might be looking for a little leaner uh, calf, and your calf is a little bit bigger, and you've got to work to slim that down. So can you talk about what goes into the competition other than just working out and eating right? Absolutely. Yeah, it, it's definitely a lot of people, like you said, have that mistake. They think, okay, I die at a train and then I step on stage. But it, it's that whole package. And the criteria depend on the category, like bikinis, different criteria, figure, fitness, and bodybuilding have different criteria that the judges are looking for. But for example, in, in reference to, say, my category as it is right now, they're looking for varying degrees of muscularity, nice flow, nice lines to the body. Um, so that's very important in terms of what the judges are looking for, but it's the whole package. So hair, makeup, you, you have to look really great on stage. You have to go for your best looks. Um, when you're picking your suit, you want to think color, fit. Um, hey, how many stones am I going to bling the heck out of this thing? Those things are important because it affects how you show on stage. Then, ne next and most important, a lot of people forget is the posing and stage presentation. Having a charisma and uh, confidence that's muted on stage that will make you utterly stand out over any other competitor is another big factor. So, and as you also mentioned there, Michael, is that the tanning, there, there is, you know, the spray tanning that is done before the shows. Um, some individuals apply it themselves, but more and more athletes now actually undergo spray tanning that is offered at the venues that give you a much darker than usual base tan so that all your lines will show up properly on stage because the stage lights will wash you out completely if you go on just even a normal person with just a standard everyday tan that you have. So very important to have the whole package come together, absolutely. Now for, for most people, you know, especially myself, the hardest area of the body to work on is that midsection, the, the abs, the lug handles, that area. Talk to me about sixpack.ca and what that's all about. Yeah, absolutely. Well, sixpack actually, the product was a designed, it's a weight loss product that was designed specifically to address the male and female challenges that come with, with losing body fat. So we have gender specific formulas, and we also address body fat in the 24-hour fat burning process. So there's an AM and a PM formula. And the method to this product is balance energy, balance blood sugar. For the men, it's support, you know, helping block fat absorption in a healthy way. For the women, it's helping cortisol, which cortisol is a major contributor to uh, fat deposition in the midsection. And then the nighttime formula is to help maximize healthy testosterone levels in men and women, because women need them too growth hormone as well, and deeper sleep states for recovery and healthier fat burning. And we know a lot of people are under stress, they don't sleep well, and that affects how your body burns fat. And when we're making reference to that midsection, you know, it's that integration of everything, your diet, your training, and a supportive product like what Six Pack 2 provides um, can give you a whole package that you need to help you achieve your goals. Yeah, I definitely need that combination. After we're done with this Skype interview, we're going to talk a little privately. Maybe you can send me down a package. Sounds good. I'll set well, you up. Tammy, thank you so much for giving us a few minutes. We hope to have you on again soon, and maybe we can do some, something on a regular basis. That's Tammy Strom. She's in Canada, A, eh? um, TammyStrom.com, UltimateContestPrep.com, uh, ultimate and six dash pack dot ca tammy thank you so much for joining us today thank you so much for having me good luck with the pregnancy uh, congratulations with that and uh you know come back soon i will for sure thank you very much tammy strom you're awesome very beautiful female fitness bodybuilder and female fitness competitor thank you so much